Our next presenter is Yoshimar Arias Figueroa from University of Campinas. Good morning, everyone. Well, my work is titled Semi-Supervised Learning Using Deep Generative Models and Metric Embedding Auxiliary Task. This work was done by myself as part of my learning process on generative models and as a continuation of what I did during my master's. So let's start with the motivation for this problem. And the motivation is that nowadays we have a huge amount of data. We have images, video, text, speech, but most of this data is unlabeled. And labeling is really a hard and expensive process. But what if we have a small amount of this data labeled? Then labeling a small amount of label of data is not that difficult. So the question that arises is, can we learn good representations and perform classification in a semi-supervised way? There exist different methods that try to solve this problem, and some of them are based on generative models, and one of these models is the variational autoencoder. Um, so the variational autoencoder is a stochastic version of a vanilla autoencoder, where instead of learning a deterministic latent variable, what we learn is a, a stochastic latent variable uh, that represents a probability distribution. And we can approximate this probability distribution by using variational inference, and with variational inference, we can derive this variational lower bound, which is the loss function of the variational autoencoder. Here we have the first term is the reconstruction loss, and the second term is our regularizer that encourages our approximation to be as close as possible to a prior distribution. Now, training uh, stochastic latent variables is not that easy because we cannot bad propagate through them directly, but there exist methods that uh, solve this problem. For instance, if we are trying to learn a Gaussian distribution, we can use the reparameterization trick, and if we are trying to learn a categorical distribution, we can use an approximation called the gumbel sodmax distribution. And we use these two representations in our probabilistic model. Now let's go to the proposed method, and let's start by giving an intuition of this. So the input data is a large amount of unlabeled data, and a small amount of labeled data. So the first step is to learn some feature representations from this data. Next, we try to infer two distributions. First, the Gaussian distribution that will improve the representations, and the categorical distribution that uh, will represent our categories. Finally, we pass both the categorical distribution and the Gaussian distribution through the decoder for reconstruction. So here we have our probabilistic model, where the Gaussian and categorical distributions are stochastic latent variables, and the feature representations are deterministic latent variables. We can derive a variational lower bound uh, from this probabilistic model, and it is composed by three loss functions. The first one is the reconstruction loss. The second one is a regularizer. This is the, called the categorical loss. And the last one is uh, the Gaussian loss, which is a regularizer of the Gaussian distribution. Now, besides this three loss function of the probabilistic model, we also proposed our auxiliary task, which is given by two loss functions. The first one is the assignment loss that will assign labels to the unlabeled data and the metric embedding loss that regularizes the feature space. So our final loss function is composed by this variational loss and our, our proposed auxiliary task loss. Now here on top we have our probabilistic model and below is the network architecture that implements this model. As we can see, we are using convolutional neural networks to learn our feature representations. Now let's analyze each loss independently. So the first one is the reconstruction loss, which is given between the input and output of the network. We can use the binary cross-entropy loss or the mean square error here, depending on the data we are working with. The next one is the categorical loss, which is given by the KL divergence between our approximation and a prior distribution. In our case, we use the uniform distribution. The next one is the Gaussian loss, which is pretty similar to the categorical loss, but instead of using a uniform distribution, we use the normal distribution. Now, before explaining you our proposed auxiliary task, let's recall what metric learning is. So metric learning works over the feature space of the data. And the goal of metric learning is to learn a distance function such that elements that belong to the same class will have a smaller distance than elements that belong to different class. So this, is, this process can be depicted in this picture where we can see how the feature space changes according to the distance learned. Now, in the literature, there exist different methods that uh, try to solve this problem, and we are based on the lifted structured loss. Something important to consider here is that uh, we require all the data labeled. So the first step is to perform an assignment process for the unlabeled data. And what we do here is just to compare the feature representations of the unlabeled data with respect to all the feature representations of the labeled data. Next, we apply the k-nearest neighbor, for instance, k equal to 7. And in order to assign a label for the unlabeled data, what we do is just to apply this distance weighted KNN, which is a softed version of the majority vote. Now that we have 
all our data labeled, we can teach our network about these assignments by using a classification laws like the cross-entropy laws. Finally, we have our metric embedding laws, which is applied over the feature representations of the data. And as I have told you before, it is based on the lifted structure laws. Now let's pass to the experiments and results. We tested our method on three datasets, the MNIST, SBHN, and CIFAR-10 datasets. The experimental setup is given here, where we partition the train set into 80% for training, 20% for validation. The number of labeled elements is given according to the literature, and that is 100 of labeled data for MNIST, 1,000 for SBHN, uh, 4,000 for CIFAR-10. The only preprocessing step that we performed was normalization of the data. The hyperparameter selection was performed by using random search, uh, and our final results were reported using five random seeds. So first, let's see the importance of the N-metric embedding loss. What we did here was to train our probabilistic model. Uh, we added first the assignment loss, which is given by the blue line, and next we added the metric embedding loss, which is given by the red line. We can see that the metric embedding loss helps us to improve the performance of our method. And here we have quantitative results, and here what we did was to compare our method against state-of-the-art methods that are based on generative models. Uh, color roads denote methods that use Bayesian approaches, which are similar to ours. We can see that our method is very competitive on the MNIST dataset and outperforms all the Bayesian methods on the SBH N dataset, which is a hardware dataset. However, uh, generative adversarial networks have outperformed all the Bayesian approaches. Additionally, we show some initial results on the CIFAR-10 dataset, where our results uh, were not the best. Uh, that may be due to variational autoencoder tend to struggle on complex data sets that, like CIFAR-10. Next, we have uh, the qualitative results of our method. What we did here was to test the generative part of our model. Uh, we performed some generation, for instance, random generation, where we generated uh, random digits for each uh, category, and style generation. In style generation, we have this first column, which is passed as input, and we, then we generate some digits according to the features representation of this input data. Uh, let's now pass to the conclusions and future work. So we propose here a semi-supervised auxiliary task which aims to define category assignments to the unlabeled data. And we taught our network about these assignments by using our assignment laws. Uh, we also propose this uh, metric embedding auxiliary task laws which regularizes the feature space and helps us to improve our performance in our method. And our loss function is combined, it's a combination of two loss functions. The first one is the variational loss, which is part of the probabilistic model, and our proposed auxiliary task loss. As future works, we are aiming to uh, change the assignment process, for instance, by using clustering algorithms. In that case, the problem becomes completely unsupervised. And of course, the use of generative adversarial networks, uh, which have shown best results for this type of task. Uh, that's it, if you are interested in semi-supervised learning, then you can check out on the poster, thanks.